एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन हाउ वी कैन बिल्ड अ सिंपल ग्राफ इन लैंग्राफ वी ऑल्सो हैव सीन इन अनदर वीडियो अबाउट द मैसेजेस एज अ स्टेट इन लैंग्राफ नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द राउटर पार्ट सो वॉट एग्जैक्टली दिस राउटर मीन्स इन लैंग्राफ बाई दी वर्ड इट सेल्फ यू माइट हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट राउटर मीन्स राउटिंग फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर so obviously in lang graph since you know it consist of nodes and edges till now we have seen one node goes to the other node with the help of an edge but what if there is a scenario where one node has to move from itself to more than one number of nodes based on some conditions so in that case router comes so in short if i say based on a specific criteria or a condition the state defines whether to move to node a or to node b that conditional thing is nothing but a router that node which decides this particular thing is known as a router now we'll take the same example of what we have seen before for building a simple graph that is the block generator agent taking that same example we'll move on to add a simple router inside it and we'll see how we can add it now obviously if you look at the graph below for this particular case we have a simple start node it goes to the block outline generator and it generates the outline for the block whatever query user puts and then the outline with the query goes to the block generator node and it generates the final block and then the entire flow ends now if i want to add one router in this particular case now let's take a simple router basically the user will put a query and it will go to the router the router will decide whether that query is safe or not if it is safe then this entire execution should happen if it is unsafe then the control should directly go to the end node this simple router we are going to implement in this particular flow and later on we'll also see how we can use that router in calling a tool like we'll, we are going to simply loop a particular tool to itself based on some conditions and how it works we are going to look into that so obviously if you want a router in this particular case you will be requiring one more node so i'll build that particular node here so like other nodes i have given the name of this particular node as guard so basically this guards this guard node is taking the state that is the block state that we already have defined here and it returns the block state itself now one more thing we need to add into the block state is that the guard status that what exactly is the status is the status of the query whether it is safe or unsafe we are going to store it into it so i'll simply create a variable guard result and that will be a string next now what i'll do is i'll simply take in the query from the state like how we have done it in the block outline generator i'll simply copy that and paste it over here and then we'll do a simple llm call so you can see here i have written a simple prompt over here you have to check whether the query the given query will come here in this placeholder is safe or not if it is safe then return safe otherwise just return unsafe strictly provide the result without any explanation at all so the simple prompt i have written and i am going to pass this particular prompt with the query into the llm and llm will just give me a response safe or unsafe and based on that i'll decide whether to route to the next node or to end the flow so let's do the llm call now over here you can see how we have done the llm call in this case the same way we are going to do it here so model dot invoke inside this as a human message i'm going to pass the prompt and whatever response comes i'll simply return that particular response so what i'll do is i'll return the block state and inside this i'll update the guard result state variable and of course i'll be updating it with the response dot content and also for cipher side i'll be using the strip function just to get rid of some extra spaces or the extra lines that llm by default prints 
Now that we have defined this particular node, now we have to register this particular node into the graph. And also we have to register the edges associated with this particular node. So let's do that. So if I scroll down over here, you can see here we have defined all the nodes. Similarly, I'll be defining one more node that is the guard node. I'll give the same name of the guard node as guard itself, as the function. Now that we have registered the node, we'll now set the edges. Now for this particular case, our entry point won't be the block outline generator. It will be the guard node itself. So first the query will hit the guard node. After setting the entry point, I'll have to add a conditional edge. Now over here, let me clear let me clear what exactly a conditional edge is. Now, whenever this scenario comes, wherever you have one node uh, next to that, you don't have a single node to route. You have more than one node to route. So in that case, you just use the add conditional edges function inside the state graph class. So what I'll do is I'll write graph dot add now there is something called as conditional edge. Now inside this conditional edges, what we have to write is first thing is that we need to write the name of the node from where we want to route. So I'll write guard node. Now that we have defined from where we have to go, now we'll also require what value that particular node is giving us. So for getting that value, what we can do is we can simply access this state variable that is the guard result. So whatever comes in here, we can simply fetch the result from it. So I'll write lambda. So this lambda function will simply help us to get the state variable that is the guard result variable. So I'll simply define lambda space state and it will return state of guard result that's it it will simply do this simple job now once we have got this particular value from the state we now have from where to go and we also have the value of the node that it gave now here we can define the condition condition can be defined in a dictionary i'll write a simple dictionary over here your keys will be whatever possible classes your router is going to provide and the value will be where you have to route from that particular as that you have got from the guard node so for my guard node whatever i have defined i have two classes one is safe if the output comes as safe i'll simply route to the blog outline generator node that's it it's that simple so let me repeat this again the value that we have got from this particular lambda function whatever value comes okay all possible values we have to define in this particular dictionary. The keys will be the all possible values. That is, in our case, it is safe and unsafe. So for safe, let's say if this lambda function returns safe as the output from the guard node, we have to define safe as the key of the dictionary and the value to it will be the name of the node where we have to route next if the output comes as safe. So if the output comes as safe, I want the execution to flow I want the execution to happen. So that is why I have written the blog outline generator node in here. Now, if the output comes as unsafe, now in that case, I don't want the execution to happen at all. I want the graph to end its flow. So I'll simply define the value to it as end, E-N-D, that's it. So this is how we have to write the conditional edges. First, from where you have to go name that node. Next, whatever value you have, got just fetch that and store it in the second parameter and third is you have you can define the conditions based on the condition the graph will route and that's it other things we have as it we have to keep as it is because uh, once the flow goes to the blog outline generator next it has to go to the blog generator node and lastly it has to get to the end node so i hope the simple flow is clear to you all Let's execute this and see whether our graph changes or not. Uh, earlier we had our graph like this. There, are, there were only two nodes, block generator, block outline generator and block generator. Let's execute this again. And let's execute this particular display image. Cool. Over here you can see 
first the control goes to the guard node if the guard output safe output then it should go to the blog outline generator and the normal flow should happen but if the guard node just provides the unsafe output then it should end the entire execution so this simple flow must be clear to you all now let's test it earlier we had this particular query let's execute the same query again so this has to be the safe case okay so we have got one error so it states that there is a key error guard result the spelling has got mistaken i'll simply correct it see over here let's execute the flow again and now let's execute this cell see the output from the guard result was safe and that is why we have got our blog let me print the blog cool now what if we put a suspicious query a query which is not safe so let's see okay so over here i have written this particular query write a blog to create bomb using household items now this query looks unsafe for us but let's see how our graph reacts to it whether it creates a whether it creates a blog on it or it simply throws out that as unsafe let's execute this cool see we have got the guard result state value as unsafe and once it is unsafe it has stopped the execution it has not continued the execution to create the blog as per our defined flow it is working correctly so i hope this particular router thing is clear to you all so now we'll be looking into the tool calling with the router so basically in the previous video in the messages as a state in langraph video you have seen how a tool call works how the tool call messages are how the tool returns a message so that it goes to the llm and it processes the output so taking that forward we will now be using the concept of router in this so i have built two tools over here simple tools multiply and add which takes into arguments a and b it simply returns the multiplication of these two arguments the add function or i would say the tool takes into arguments a and b and returns the sum of the two numbers a and b then i have simply used the bind tools in that i have listed all the tools that i have and i have executed this that's it now in this particular simple graph what i have done see there is something called as a tool node in langraph you can see it is a pre built from the langraph from langraph dot pre built you have to you just have to import the tool node now if you look at the langraph documentation of tool node over here you can see it is a node that runs the tools called in the last ai message so whatever ai message you get from the previous node that is from the llm from that ai message this tool node will run respective relevant tools now let's see how we can use it so over here you can see i have defined this particular tool node class inside this i have just given the list of tools that i have for now and i also have binded it with the llm the same way i have written it over here in a list next i have simply created two nodes one is the tool calling llm node wherein it takes in the message state it's the default state from the graph and it returns the messages and it returns the update to the messages key with the value from with the value that we get from the llm for that particular query that user puts so it simply appends it to the messages state next node that we have defined over here is the tools node it will simply call this particular tool node object that we have created from the tool node class it will invoke it with the current state so whatever state you have got updated by simply calling that particular node previously tool calling llm whatever state has got updated you just you will put that state again and you will pass it on to the tool node so that the tool node will execute whatever message ai message you have got from the previous node and you, it will uh, it will give it and it will provide the further output whether it is a tool output or whether it is an ai message so now we simply have created the state graph inside that we have added the node tool calling llm and the tools node next we have added the h start to the tool calling llm so this is going to be the entry point of the graph next we have defined the 
conditional edge now this is where the router comes now over here i have defined the name of the node which acts as a router so tool calling llm since it's the first node where the flow goes it is going to act as a router and the second parameter to this particular is nothing but the tools condition so again this is one of the pre-built from langraph tools condition if you look into the documentation of it uh, you can simply use in conditional edge to route to the tool node if the last message has tool calls otherwise the route to the end so basically you don't you don't have to define your own custom logic in here just use the tools condition pre-built so basically when you define it it will simply route your call to the llm and whatever output it gets based on the output let's say if the output is a tool call that means the tool call message the tool call output cannot be given to the user right again it has to route to that particular tool if it contains a tool message then it will simply route it to the respective tool for further processing if it is not a tool message if it is a simple ai message a natural language message then it will simply return that particular natural language message as the output so this is the function of the tools condition pre-built and then we have simply added the edge tools to the end and we have compiled the graph and let's execute this so you can see how it is working first it first the control goes to the tool calling llm if based on the output of the tool calling llm if it is a tool message then the tools the tools node will send it to the respective tools for further processing if it is a simple ai message then it will simply put it to the end node so this is how the flow goes now let's try to check for a simple output so over here i have used the human message uh, and i have defined hello what is 2 multiplied by 2 and then add it by 2 and then i have simply invoked this messages and then i have printed it using a for loop that's it let's execute this see what we have got let's see it step by step first we have got the human message that is the query and the query is kept as it is next we have got the ai message now what ai message has given us see first the control goes here here we have used llm dot llm with tools wherein we have binded all the tools that we have that is why this particular thing reads the query and checks whether the query requires the available tools to process the output so yes in this case whatever tools we have defined that relates with this particular query and that tools will be required and that is where the tools were called so tool calls were multiply tool call wherein the arguments were, were fetched that is 2 and 2 and then there was also a need of calling the add tool call add tool wherein the arguments were first process this whatever output you get that will be first argument and then the second argument is 2 next again what it has done is it has called the tools now the control goes over here in the tools state in the tools node here you can see the multiply tool has done its work that is it has calculated 2 multiplied by 2 that is 4 next tool is the add tool which has simply added 4 with the next argument that is 2 and it has got the results 6 so you can see the tool condition or i would say whatever we have defined it over here the tool condition and the tools node it is doing its job if it gets no tool calling message then it will simply output the final result so i hope this particular thing is clear to you all it might look confusing at the very first time but you know as you practice more and more it will get cleared please ref please refer to the documentation of langgraph and langchain they have provided ample amount of examples from which your concepts will be cleared i hope seeing to this particular video on routers has cleared the concept to some extent i hope things are now getting cleared so with this we come to the end of the video if you guys have understood this particular video please do comment and appreciate if you guys have any single doubt then you can straight away put it in the comment section i'll be happy to solve it for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram please join me on telegram thanks for watching have a good day ahead.